So I'm going to do an illustrator here. So we'll go ahead and get that open. And the very first thing that we're going to do over here is we're going to need to set up and create a new file. Whenever you're creating files for these laser cutters, it's very important to follow the documentation supplied here. These machines are looking for a specific file size every time that they cut. And that file size is the exact size of that laser bit, which means it needs to be 32 inches by 18 inches. If it's any bigger or smaller than this, it will mess up the file when it attempts to cut. And most commonly what happens is it's not going to uh, position it where you design it to be. We need to make sure that everything is just, uh, cut exactly as we designed it here. So 32 for the width, 18 for the height, exactly as it corresponds over here. And the second thing we need to set up is going to be the color mode. On most computers, um, Illustrator will start in a CMYK color mode. This needs to be changed to an RGB color mode. This is very important because colors are used to specify different types of cuts. If it's not in the correct color mode, when we send a file to the machine, if it can't read the colors, it's not going to cut anymore. So this is a very important thing to change here. So 32, 18, and an RGB color mode. We're going to hit OK. This creates our document. Uh, at this point, we want to get some guidelines in the file so we know where we can place our materials. So our material piece today is this piece of cardboard. It measures out roughly 12 by 12. And when I do my measurements, it's always from the upper left corner of that laser bay. So to get guidelines going, we need to go to View, Rulers, and Show the Rulers. This enables us to create guidelines. And to create a guideline, we'll click on the ruler and drag to the point we want to mark. In this case, 12 inches over and 12 inches down. So we've got that in place. We also recommend a set of guidelines about a quarter inch from each edge of the laser bed. It's not a requirement, but we recommend it because if your material is not perfectly squared off, if the bed is not perfectly positioned, you always want to give yourself a little bit of a margin just in case something goes wrong. You don't want to ruin your piece of material with something that gets cut off the edge of the material there. So you do a quarter inch on each side there. And this would be an ideal file setup. You have your guideline set up. It's 32 by 18. It's in an RGB color mode, so we're good to go. At this point, we go ahead and create a design. Uh, for the sake of time, we've already got one pre-designed. And what we're going to do is actually create another one of these planes here. So let's go ahead and get that file open. Your... This is using just basic vector lines and some filled font and fill objects here. Uh, in order to get this to cut, we do have to do some additional modifications to this file. It will not cut out one of these planes if I send it as it stands right now. If I attempt to send this file right now, what it's actually going to create is something very similar to this raster board, where it reads everything here as a raster setting. Because it currently is going to look for fill objects, which the AOC, the stars, fit into. There's no images or gradations, but all of these lines are considered heavy because the current stroke value on those lines is set to one point. In order for these to be set to vector, we need to change that one point to point one. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here, is select any line that I want to be vector. I'm all selected. Come up to the stroke up here. Point one is not available in the drop down, so if we do have any vector lines, you're going to have to remember to type point one manually. Now that they're all set to point one, when it's received by the laser cutter, the laser cutter will know that these are vector lines. It's going to trace and cut each of these lines freely. But now there's a new problem. They're all the same color, which means when the laser cutter gets this data, it's going to group them all to the same settings. Now, the problem with this is these are not all the same types of cuts here. We have some cuts that are cutting all the way through, but if those same settings were to happen on these folds, that means that that's going to fall off. And all the details and sides here, it's just going to completely destroy the plane model. We need to tell the laser cutter that the outline is actually a separate cut from these details. And these are a separate cut from these folds here. And this is where those colors come into play. The colors are going to tell the laser cutter what the separate cuts are. So um, at the bottom of page three is where we're going to find the colors that we can use. On the bottom of this page, there's a listing of eight colors in this table here. These are the only colors you can use during this process. If the laser cutter does not recognize a color, it automatically will throw it to the black category of the top of this list here. So it's very important to use the exact RGB values that we have supplied here. You'll also notice it lists the order that these cuts happen. Order can be very important on certain types of materials. Lighter materials like cardboard, papers, thin fabrics, these are all very light materials. And when this uh, machine is turned on, there's a very powerful ventilation system that's going to suck all the smoke being generated. When a cut is um, freed from the stock material that could potentially now lift out of the stock material, it could fly around inside that machine. If the pieces are small enough, it could actually get sucked out of the back of the machine. 
Uh, the problem with this is if it happens too soon, like with this here, if it cuts the outline first, well, this is now freed from the stock material. And if it were to fly around or shift at all within that bed, that means all the interior cuts could be out of place. We want to make sure that anything contained within a cut happens before the outline. So a good way to guarantee this is to follow a rule of thumb that we have, and this is to work backwards through this list. This means you're going to start from the bottom of the list, working your way toward the top, assigning those colors from the outline toward the center of your design. This way, when the laser cutter is looking at these colors, it's going to start in black, which should always be the center of your design, and as it works down the list, it's going to move toward the outline, which should always be assigned to orange. So I'm going to follow this now by selecting the outline. I'm going to assign it to the orange color here at 255 for red, 102 for green, and 0 for blue. Now that it is designated orange, when it's received by the laser cutter, it will know that that is the very last line it has to cut. So, so the colors are also assigning depth. No. Nope. Uh, colors have absolutely nothing to do with the type of cut. It's, it's just happen. the order. It's just the order telling the different cut. Uh, the machine what the different cuts are. The next step is what we're going to do is we're going to take these colors and say, all right, orange, you have these power settings, and that is what we're going to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move through the rest of these, um, just moving up the list here. So the next setting will be cyan, followed by magenta. And, and those number values are on the chart? Yep. Okay. I just got them all memorized because I've been doing this for four years. So. Uh. <laughs> um, all right, so. We've got this point in here now. Um, we've got all the vector lines assigned to different colors here. So now when the file is received by the laser cutter, it first looks for anything that was in that raster engraving category. So once again, it looks for filled objects. So I see the AOC and the stars, cut them one line at a time, bottom toward the top. No images, no gradations, and no more heavy lines. So now it, when it's all done with raster, then it looks for vectors. So it's gonna look at the vector list now. So it'll look for black, no black, no uh, red, green, or yellow, it goes white to the blue, then magenta, cyan, and then the orange outline. So this is the optimal cutting order here. At this point, we need to go in and tell each color how deep it's going to cut, and that's ultimately how it knows to generate that plane. 